Good morning, besties. Saw you walking in the street one day, it was Sunday. You had flowers in your hand, you were dancing with your headphones on, thank you. Woke up like an hour ago and was scrolling on my phone, but I decided to just bring you along with my day today. I might vlog tomorrow as well. We'll just see where the day takes us. Just wanted to say hi before I start this video. Before I take the dogs on a walk, I'm eating breakfast, pre-breakfast, whatever you want to call it. But last night I ordered some Greek pitas, but I'm just going to finish this bad boy off. We have chicken, tomatoes, onions, tzatziki, lettuce, all the usual suspects. And I'm a firm believer that like any food is breakfast food, any food's lunch food dinner food snacks it's all human made constructs in the first place so like no point in stressing about anything like that cheers mm -hmm. After I walked the dogs this day, I decided to do a little bit of movement in my basement. And I just wanted to remind all of you who may be watching this that movement is only healthy and good for you if you have a good and healthy relationship with it. If you feel guilt on the days that you do not move your body, then that is a sign that you do not have a good relationship with movement as a whole. When I think of movement, I like to work with my body and not against it, which means if I'm tired, I do not work out. I listen to my body and I respect it because I deserve that and I deserve to feel safe and we all deserve to respect and care for our bodies. So I just finished up my movement and before I go and shower and like degrub, I'm going to make and prep a pasta salad so that I can have it for lunch. <gasps> oh mother effer. Okay. This is the pasta that I'm using. I'm gonna throw a decent amount in there and set a timer for 10 minutes. And when there's like two minutes left, I'm going to add in some green peas as well. This is like a spring lemon chickpea pasta salad. So that's the vibe that we're going for. Usually I would marinate the chickpeas ahead of time, but I want this pasta salad now and I didn't do this ahead of time. So it's fine, it's fine but you're going to need a can of chickpeas. I'm only gonna use around half. Grab a bowl. I have washed the chickpeas quite well, so I'm gonna add some of them into our bowl over here. Around this much. Measure with your heart. Cooking is not that serious. I'm going to do like an eighth of a cup of olive oil. I'm grabbing my handy dandy microplane and I'm going to do like two thirds of a garlic clove and just mince that into here. If you have garlic paste, you can use that as well. You can also like mince up your garlic, but it's not going to be exactly the same. But listen, I'm a garlic girl. Garlic in all its forms can be respected. Ooh. Around this much garlic, the juice of half a lemon, some salt. Normally I would do fresh parsley, but I'm out, so we're gonna use the dried stuff. And you really wanna mix that garlic paste in with the olive oil. And I'm using a shallow dish like this so that the chickpeas can just sit in that vinaigrette until we are ready to use them. This already smells, it looks delicious. Now that the pasta is like two minutes away from being done, let's add in our green peas. Ooh. Um, again, measure with your hearts. I probably added in a half cup, maybe a little bit more. I'm gonna strain the pasta and peas right now and I'm going to run it under cold water for a couple of minutes. Jesus. 
make the salad dressing. We're gonna do like a quarter cup of olive oil. I'm also going to zest one lemon to add the juice of one lemon. I really lucked out with these lemons. There's not a single seed in sight. <laughs> I'm also gonna grate in a quarter to like half a cup of Parmesan cheese, some salt, and also some black pepper, which apparently I am out of. Going to add in our pasta. I am literally making such a big mess right now. Then you're gonna add the chickpeas, including all of that marinade, like those juices. We're gonna add everything in. And we're just going to give it a nice big mix. This smells like lemon and garlic, just so freaking delicious. The longer this sits in the fridge, the better, but a little taste test to see if I need to adjust anything before I put it in the fridge. Mm. It literally tastes like spring. So good. So I've showered. I've been running around like crazy. Now I have some back-to-back -back calls. Served myself some of that pasta salad and it looks incredible. It also tastes so good. And then after my client calls today, I think we're gonna go to Costco because tomorrow we have Andrew's dad coming over to celebrate his birthday. It's like a very belated celebration, but we are going to make a homemade lasagna. And so I have to make my homemade meat sauce tonight, which I'll show you how I make mine. Again, not really a recipe, but a follow your heart kind of situation. And every time we go to Costco to get the stuff for meat sauce, we always make like a really, really big batch so that we can freeze a bunch because it is a labor of love. So we might as well just reap the benefits of making more, you know? But I'm gonna munch on this, go to my calls, and I will see you later. dog toy is but my dogs would literally rip this up in two seconds so cute though cute I do need some more of these though you're coming home with me does anybody else just forget what they need as soon as they're in the store okay so I just got out of Costco this is everything that we got I'm gonna do like a full haul at home even though I showed you a lot of the things already but prices are literally crazy everything in this cart cost me $443 which is insane we stocked up in a lot of necessities and things that we really needed but still that's just so much money the way I will see you when we get home and then we have to start making that meat sauce I've got to make the appetizer for tomorrow we're gonna be some busy bees tonight but that's okay, we'll have a good time and I will finally make my famous spaghetti sauce again. I've showed the recipe already on my channel, but I feel like it's been a really long time. So I'm just gonna show you what I do and then you can take inspiration from it if you're interested in making the meat sauce as well. There is a few things that I could not get at Costco, so we are at the grocery store to get them now. I'm gonna show you everything when we get home. I am dead tired, it is late and I still have a lot to do. So I'm gonna do a very quick grocery slash Costco haul, and then we're gonna quickly make that sauce together. So I picked up some of these beef chew sticks, like the bully sticks for my dogs. They love these so much, and they work for Harley's allergies, which is great because most things have chicken. Some dishwasher pods. Got some of these jarred artichokes to make that spinach dip that we'll make later. Some mushrooms for our sauce. These Mr. Clean like magic erasers, great for cleaning. Speaking of cleaning, I ran out of Windex, so I picked up a big, big boy like this, some Spanish onions, these organic diced tomatoes, some beef. I was also very low on Swiffer pads, so I picked these up for dusting. I was really not feeling grating Parmesan, so I picked up pre-grated Parmesan for the spinach dip. I've got some cottage cheese for Andrew. He just loves them. Some sour cream, some lasagna sheets for dinner tomorrow, a thing of milk. This is by far my favorite salad at Costco. I love it so much. It has a poppy seed dressing. I would highly recommend trying if you haven't already. Moving on to this section over here. Picked up some more artichokes, some scent beads for the laundry. This is my favorite scent. Some mayo because we were running low. I've been loving these Activia drinkable yogurts, so I got them in strawberry. 
some tortilla chips, more cottage cheese, some spinach, sweet peppers. They didn't have like the big bell peppers, but these look really tasty. Love the color. So I'm gonna use this in my sauce today. Some mozzarella cheese. I needed some more peppercorns for my pepper mill, so I picked that up. Some baguettes. We're gonna have some with dinner tonight, and then I'm gonna use some tomorrow to make some garlic bread. Butter, I always get it at Costco because it's so expensive everywhere else. Some bacon. I got this pre-shredded mozzarella cheese as well. I can never really say this, but some Parmigiano Reggiano. Basically a fancy way to say Parmesan cheese, I think. Cream cheese block. Some mini eggs because you cannot put these in front of me and I'm not gonna buy them. They are delicious, my favorite chocolate. A rotisserie chicken and some romaine lettuce. So that's everything that we got from Costco as well as the grocery store combined. And I also forgot to show you, but I also got some protein powder. It was like leaking a little bit, leaking, I don't know. It's powder was coming out um but it was on sale and it's andrew's favorite protein powder i'm not a protein powder kind of gal it's not my thing but we picked that up from costco as well but everything from costco was 443 dollars, and then everything from the grocery store was 143 dollars. so just to give you an idea of like canadian prices it is ridiculous right now it's crazy and then i did go to the pharmacy because I'm gonna be dyeing my hair back brown. I miss my I miss my roots. Speaking of roots, um, they are far outgrown. Instead of paying like $300 to get my hair done, I'm gonna try to do it myself and hope I don't fuck up because last time I fucked up. I'll put a little picture right here. It was like black at the ends, pink. It was, I don't know what I did. I don't know what I did. But I also picked up my favorite deodorant to restock. And then lastly, some of these like little elastics for my braids in my hair and things like that but that was everything um that we got i'm gonna put everything away do some chopping and then we will do like a speed version of making my sauce together all right besties this is the view that we are dealing with because she's a large pot and i want you to be able to take a peek inside i got this pot at costco but it's one of these one of these big bad boys it is a 15 liter pot if that helps anybody first things first we are going to add in a little bit of olive oil two tablespoons or so, something like that. And then over here, I cut up two large Spanish onions and I just dice them roughly. I'm gonna throw those in the pot. And I'm chopping as I'm going, so I'm gonna make sure that this is on like a medium low heat. Next up, I'm going to add some garlic and this is around like eight cloves of garlic all chopped up. Normally, I might put a little bit more, but I'm tired and I'm trying to finish this bad boy up. I have around 500 grams of mushrooms. If you don't like mushrooms, don't put it in. If you don't like meat sauce, don't make it. You know, you can literally add whatever you'd like in this. You can add carrots, you can add celery. Everybody does their bolognese sauce a little bit different. And I think that that's the beauty of it. Mine turns out different like every single time. And I love that. So for reference, this was the Costco pack of mushrooms that I got and like, this is how many are left in there. And you can just downsize the entire recipe if you wanna make a small batch of this. So typically I would do three bell peppers, but I used four of those like long sweet peppers that I got from Costco. I love the color of this one. So for this meat sauce in particular, when I make a really big batch, I let it cook overnight and then I add the spinach and all of the spices the next day because I like to taste as I go. So we're gonna make this sauce in two parts. So I'll show you what I do tonight and then tomorrow morning I will show you the finishing touches for the spice, for everything like that. But I think that that's all the chopping that I've gotta do. So I'm a happy girl that way. I'm gonna let the vegetables sweat for like another five, six minutes or so and then we are going to add in our ground beef. And yes, I'm gonna be using this entire thing of ground beef. I'm making a real big batch, but this is, for anybody interested, like seven pounds. I'm bad at math, wait. 3.3 kilograms, which in pounds, I'm gonna have my lovely editor put whatever that is right here. How much meat we are using. We like a very meaty sauce. There's like big chunks of it and it soaks up all of the sauce. It's like little meatballs. It's just delicious, okay? Delicious. So let's start breaking this bad boy in. All right, you guys, I lied. I'm actually not gonna be using all of the meat, so this is what's left. The next part is a little bit annoying because it's in like a, what is this called? Like a cylindrical pot. So I'm going to let this meat cook down with all of the vegetables, probably for like 15 to 20 minutes and just keep stirring it so that the meat gets brown. It doesn't have to be browned all the way through because I'm cooking this overnight, so it will get cooked. But I do like to get the majority of it 
um, as brown as I can before I add the tomato sauces. So while the meat and veg are cooking together, we're gonna make my famous spinach and artichoke dip. This is what's requested almost every single time that I go to an outing or like a potluck or something like that. I'm also snacking on some bread and butter because there's nothing better than a fresh baguette and butter in my opinion, or cheese, so good. Mm. Let's get this show on the road. By the way, always keep a little bowl on the counter for your compost, it just makes cleanup a lot easier. I've already emptied it a couple of times like with the onion peels and things like that, but the more you know. This is a very obnoxious bowl to use. I need a much smaller bowl, but they are all currently in my dishwasher, which is running. So this will have to do. So I forgot to take my spinach out ahead of time, but that's fine because I'm just going to microwave it. I'm gonna link the recipe for this in the description down below. Personally, I like to add more spinach, but I'm gonna throw this in the microwave probably for like a couple of minutes before we put it into this bowl. Ignore what this looks like, but I microwave the spinach and you want to absorb as much of the water as possible. You really don't wanna put in all of that moisture in there. I've only ever made this with frozen spinach, so I don't really know how it would fare with fresh, but I'm going to add our spinach in there. The next thing that's going to go in there are those two jars of artichokes that I bought. I rinsed the marinade off of them and then also squeezed out the excess water because again, you do not want a watery dip. But I'm just going to roughly slice these up. They don't have to be a uniform size because you can get big chunks of artichoke, small chunks, whatever kind of floats the boat. And while I cook, I usually have a true crime episode or something going on on YouTube. And today I'm listening to the latest Eleanor Neal video. Love her so much. So into our big and mighty bowl over here, I'm going to add in all of those diced artichokes. I realized I should have done the garlic first because this is like a war zone right now, but either way. So you can do as much or as little garlic as you like. I'm gonna be using three chunky cloves today. So I'm gonna add the three chopped cloves of garlic in there. Next up, you're gonna add in eight ounces of cream cheese. I did not put this in the fridge when we got home, so it is nice and soft. I'm going to do a quarter cup of sour cream. I'm filling it a little bit over. And then I'm also going to do a quarter cup of mayo, two thirds of a cup of Parmesan cheese, and it's okay if some overflows. This is why I bought the pre-grated stuff because I, I could not be bothered. Then I'm gonna do around half a cup of mozzarella cheese, maybe a little bit more for good luck. And then some black pepper. And because the artichokes were marinating in like already kind of like a salty marinade, I'm not gonna add any salt. But if the artichokes that you're using were marinated in water or sitting in water, I would add a pinch of salt to this as well. But now we're just going to mix it all up. All right, you are done when it looks something like this. And this is an artichoke dip that you bake in the oven and I just wanted to prep it tonight so that tomorrow would be super easy. I'm gonna transfer it to a baking dish. There we go, the dip is all ready for tomorrow. And I'm gonna leave the baking instructions in the description down below in case you wanna make this as well. Okay, so now it's time to finish up the sauce. And this part is really simple because then we're just gonna let it be. But you're gonna add two things to the sauce. You're going to be adding crushed tomatoes and diced tomatoes. The ones that I'm going to add don't have like any herbs or anything with them because we're gonna add that tomorrow. But you can also use like the herbed or spiced ones. Making your own tomato sauce is really, really easy. You don't have to use jarred sauce, but you also can if you want to. I just think that this tastes a lot better in my opinion. So diced tomatoes, crushed tomatoes, and you're gonna add like 50-50, like one can crushed and then one can diced. And our goal is basically to like just cover all of the meat sauce. So this is what the meat sauce is looking like right now after I added all of the diced tomatoes and that tomato sauce. But now you just let it rest. So this is gonna be cooking for like 12 hours or so. And again, I only add the spices later on so that I can taste and adjust. Right now, all of the flavors have not been like blended together. 
the meat needs to be like fully, fully cooked through. And so we're just going to leave it. So now I'm left with the worst job, which is cleaning up the kitchen. And honestly, I'm gonna make some dinner and go to bed because your girl is tired and she's got a busy day tomorrow. But I'll see you tomorrow to add all of those final touches to our spaghetti bolognese. Hello friends, it is the next day and we are getting ready to finish up our sauce. I am currently in my cleaning outfit, a pair of boxers and just some shirt that I don't really care about because after this, I've got to clean my home because she is quite dirty right now. So let's wrap up this sauce and show you the spices that I add. So first things first, I'm gonna use salt and I like to use kosher salt because this is a really big batch of sauce. You're gonna need a lot of spices, so don't be afraid of spicing things up. So I like to add, taste, and then adjust from there, but we've got some salt, some cracked black pepper. I'm gonna do this until my hand hurts, basically. Lots of oregano, some Italian seasoning. If you don't like it spicy, you don't have to add this, but we like to add in quite a lot of chili flakes, some garlic powder and also some sugar. The sugar is important, don't skip it. Sugar really helps with the acidity of tomato sauce, and so that's why you will find it in a lot of recipes uh, for any sort of like tomato-based sauce. It's to cut the acid. It is necessary, okay? Okay. Give this a nice big stir, and then you just taste and adjust. So mine needs a little bit more salt, a little bit more pepper, and also a little bit more of those crushed chilies. So I'm gonna add those, but that is kind of how I make my bolognese sauce. And now I'm gonna keep cooking it for the rest of the day until I'm ready to dish up that lasagna later. But I do have a very busy evening where I'm not gonna be able to take out my camera and vlog, but there's still one more part of this vlog that we're gonna get done together, which you will see in three, two, one. Hello, we are in my bathroom. And in this vlog, we're gonna dye my hair. Is it past midnight? Yes. Am I a little bit tipsy? Also yes. Are we gonna do it anyway? You guessed it, yes we are. I have dyed my hair one time at home, twice. It never really turned out that great, but I am sick of the blonde, so. Let's do this. This is the hair dye that I'm using in case that I, uh, you know, want to remember it for good or bad reasons. And this is in the shade Natural Brown Ash. I asked the woman at the pharmacy to help color match me, but I know that it's not their specialty, but I just needed like a second opinion. It might be a little bit lighter, it might be a little bit darker, but it's just hair. I don't care that much, to be honest. I read these instructions briefly. And the most important thing is that I gotta keep it in for 25 minutes. Let's see what happens. So it comes with this little bottle and this is called Color Optimizing Cream. And I'm supposed to put the color gel, all of it into this bottle and then mix it up. So that's what we're gonna do first. I put a towel that I do not care about over here on my counter um, because I do not want to stain anything. And this is also the shirt that I paint in. So it's just covered. Covered in paint. Ooh, I gave it a whiff. It smells interesting. Ooh, alrighty. Pour all of that in there. Damn. I don't know what I expected, but I didn't expect it to look like oil. So I just put my finger on top and just shake until everything is ooh, well combined. Does this look well combined to you guys? It does? Okay, thank you. Now, there's a lot of different methods that you can do to dye your hair apparently, but I'm gonna do the all over method where you just uh, literally put it all over your hair. Got my gloves. Uh, last time I didn't use gloves at all, so this is a step up. The fact that this hair dye comes with gloves. Ooh, this is nice. Girl, this all this is you right here? Feel like I should divide my hair in half so it's easier. I might regret this, but. YOLO. You only live once in hair. Again, it's not, it's, it's not that serious. A little bit more. I really hope that one box is enough um, for my hair. Oh my God, <laughs> it smells so bad. Thank God I put a towel down, Jesus Christ. I think this might be like a biohazard. I'm gonna start just by getting like a base layer down and then I'll use the rest in my hair, on my hair. 
God, my eyes kind of sting a little bit. He said to do a strand test in case I'm allergic, but I didn't, I didn't do that. Is this side of my hair turning brown or is it turning gray and purple? <coughs> Jesus. <coughs> okay, let's do the next part of this. Hair. It's really fucking toxic. I feel like it's working though. <coughs> Are there big blonde pieces in the back of my head? That I can't see that I'm not reaching? No. See any blonde? No? I literally asked my boyfriend two seconds ago if there's a blonde in the back of my head and he goes no and then I just see the biggest blonde piece. Is he blind? Oh my god, okay. I have this little hairnet that came with like a Sephora hair mask. Now I look even more like a little surgeon. You should not trust me on your surgery, okay? I literally got the dye all over my neck, but we're gonna shower very soon. 25 minutes starting now. Um, am I okay? <laughs> I am hoping that this comes off in the shower, but it's been 25 minutes. I'm gonna go in the shower, I'm gonna rinse it out. And then the last step is to use this color shine conditioner. So I'm gonna bring it with me in there. Let's hope I didn't turn my hair purple or black. And also that this comes off because Andrew and I are going on a date tomorrow. We shall see. Let me go there, do, do my thing, and we'll come back and look at like the final result together. So I just got out of the shower and my hair is wet. It looks darker, I think, than my natural hair. But at the same time, I feel like we're... I feel like it looks like a pretty good match. I do feel like it's maybe a little bit on the blacker side, but I'm feeling good. The only thing I could not get off was this, like, like I got off most of the stuff all over my neck. I scrubbed my face raw, like it's red and this wouldn't come off. So I'm gonna try to get that off tomorrow, but I'm gonna go to sleep because it is 12.41 a.m. I'm tired, but I will show you what the hair looks like tomorrow morning. Hello friends, it is the next day and I just wanted to finish up this vlog. This is what my hair ended up looking like. I really, really do love it. My natural brown hair has always been my favorite, but it's so fun to just test out new colors. I've been redheaded. I've had money pieces, I've been bleach blonde, I've had short hair, I've had long hair. I love playing with my hair so much, but I think I'm gonna go back to my roots for a little bit. It was a little bit chaotic, but also fun to dye my hair with all of you. And some people ask me what my natural hair looks like, and this is kind of it. I've been awake for a little while, so it's lost some of its waves. But no, I do not have curly hair, I have whatever this is called wavy wavy hair that's an example of what a what a piece looks like but i hope that you enjoyed this vlog if you would like to see more videos like this then let me know in the comments down below and i hope to see you in my next video bye friends